again, uh, if you feel led to do that, uh, we haven't been able to do that for the last couple of years. And uh, it, it can make a difference with what God can uh, do with that. Uh, just bring your cookies up and put them in the freezer there in the back of the fellowship hall. Anything else? Very good. Let's pray and then we'll do our pledges. Uh, that's if Emma can help because Emma's tired. <laughs> See? I'll tell you. Oh. <laughs> Father, as we gather here this morning, <clears throat> Father, I ask that you bless us with your word. Father, I know that your word has been prayed for already. So, Father, I pray for us that are about to receive your word. Father, that our hearts be open yeah. and ready. And Father, that we can be used as individuals and as a church to further your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Father, I have talked about some of the mission here this morning. Father, bless those ministries. And Father, let it just lead people to you. Father, I do thank you for Brother James being here this morning. And Father, his willingness to fill your pulpit. Father, I ask that you use him in a mighty way here this morning. Mm -hmm. Father, that we all might be changed. Father, bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Emma, are you there? Where are you? Okay, Emma's going to lead us if you please stand in our pledges. Place to the flag, Emma. short something this morning? <laughs> A piano bucket. So, I guess God said wing it, we'll wing it. All right? All right. Join me in this. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with Say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice. Seated. I can put the rest of the song down. Can you? Yeah. All right. Not, 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 not we used to, but the 
I will say if this goes in there. This is a whole song. I love it. As you can tell, I can't sing it very good, but I love it. Go ahead.
get to heaven, how old are we going to be? I don't want to be this old. <laughs> I believe God's going to pick out a spot where it was, we were the best shape we were ever in. And that's where we're going to remain. Amen? Amen. Because I, I wouldn't want to be I wouldn't want to be there before I come to know Jesus or knew him. That wasn't a good time. But shortly after we know Christ, we know what he has for us. And we know what he does for us. That's where I want to be. Yeah. Amen. 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 Would you stand with us? This will be our offertory. Father, you have been with us. Father, you are with us. You have always been with us. And Father, you will continue to be with us. Father, that light that shines in this world is from you. And Father, there is no darkness in it. Thank you for your word. Father, as your word is shared here today, Father, once again, speak to us. Father, move us out of wherever we are, out of that darkness and into that spiritual light, Father, that can only come from Christ. Father, help us seek that here today. Father, as we gather this offering, Father, we gather it for you. 
the Father asks that you honor this offering and take it and bless it. Yes. Bless those that give and those that can. But Father, it may be used for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Children of the church, kids, hey, one time. I'm supposed to say Jesus loves you, but I can't say it. remember one Sunday I got up, Dana, you'll remember this, I got up, Brother Snapton, I had, there had been all kinds of things going on that week, couldn't, kind of like not having a pianist, kind of like not having, not being able to hear it, and, but my preaching was terrible that day, I remember getting a third of the way through and going, Lord, help me get the <laughs> Let, let me get through the tin deal. Just give me the tin deal, Lord. Just give me the tin deal. I, I remember shutting my eyes to pray. I moved down front. I, I remember it was the worst sermon those poor people had to endure. 
I remember going down front and just standing there, David, and praying and lowering my head, shut my eyes. Uh, I can't make a whole lot of excuses. I just didn't have it ready. And uh, I remember there were several that had been in the hospital that week, a car wreck or something, some crazy stuff. And instead of owning it, I was young enough and dumb enough to try to keep going. And I, I thought to myself, should you know, I was up. I bowed my head and shut my eyes and, and prayed and I quit prayer. And then, just how you feel, people, all of a sudden, people were moving all around. And here they go. They were coming down the aisle by the groves. I, I think we had five families join that Sunday. Right. And two or three people got saved. And it was the craziest thing. And, and after it was all over, the Lord just showed me and said, Dang, are you ever going to learn the thing about you? About me? Yeah. And whenever we make it about Him, put the juices on me and I'm hot already. So, juice that is about Him, not about me and you, about him. And if we'll just say, okay, Lord, let us have this morning in you. So let's just do that right. Father, before you we stand, I thank you for our feeble attempts to sing this morning. Yeah. But I praise you, God, that you said that we're two or more gathered in your name, you're there. Right. I bless you and honor you, Father, for your holiness and righteousness. I bless you for being almighty. And I bless you more than anything else, Father, for just being the God who loves his children. Yeah. Loves people. For you so loved the world that you sent Jesus to die on the cross. And whosoever believed in him did not perish, not die, but have everlasting life in Hallelujah. It's in the name of Jesus. All his people say. Amen. Amen. So I want to start with, we're going to be in the book of Nehemiah this morning. So grab your Bible, open it up to the book of Nehemiah, the first chapter. And this morning I want to preach to you about a couple of things that I believe real evident uh, lays in this scripture. It's real evident for our time and who we are. Uh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. For it is in the house of the Lord that we see God do a lot of things. Now, while you're turning to Nehemiah, let me just explain to you a couple things. October the 2nd is our annual meeting. I'm going to expect you to be there. It's going to be at 5 o'clock in the evening at Central Baptist Church here in Pampa. I'm hoping there's three, four, five hundred of us. And uh, it will be a time where we fellowship, worship, relate to the word of the Lord, and I, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. We're going to have a missions type of a theme. We're going to have several different speakers from churches that have been doing ministry all, all year long, where they've been going and doing ministry and working and worshiping and, and talking to people about Jesus, and we're going to hear stories and tales about God's faithfulness. And folks, I just want you to know, you're going to get to hear firsthand how God works, how God moves. Mm -hmm. Second, I want you to know that that day we're going to have a meal, and it'll be a good one. So if you have good preaching, good fellowship, and a good meal, Baptists are bound to come. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's what we're going to do, okay? All right. Now, most of you, I think, are there into the book of Nehemiah. We're going to start. Uh, Nehemiah had heard... Uh, by a very reliable source that Jerusalem's walls were down, depleted, gone. Verse 4 is where we're going to pick up. And he says, As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him, and keep his commandments. Verse 5. Let your ear be attentive and your ears open to hear the prayer of your servant that I may 
that I know I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sin of the people of Israel who have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you have commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you have commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. Nehemiah had a problem. It's pretty evident in the prayer that he's praying that his heart was broken for the people and the people's needs. And one of the things that broke his heart more than anything else was the very fact that his father and all their tombs were resting in that area where it had just been dilapidated. In fact, this morning, I want you to know I'm going to be preaching on what it is to know the purpose and the will and the heart of God. And how do you get to know that? How do you get to understand that? First off, I want you to know, if you'll notice right here in this passage, Nehemiah starts off with the very fact of confessing the sin of the house of Israel. And he confesses the sin of his own home. And, and if you'll notice here, there are some things that really stand out. Here's one. He says to the Lord, Lord, I know we've even sinned against you. We're sinful. And he confesses it. Folks, if you want to hear God, if you honestly, you, you say, I, I've never heard God. Or, I don't listen. I don't hear God like the preacher says that we need to hear God. Or I haven't heard God in a long time. Folks, if you want to hear God, here's one of the first things that you need to do. And that is confess the sin of your house. Yeah. Clean up. That's not about you. That's not about your home. That's not about your family. That's talking about clean up. Get before the Lord and get clean. And that's what he does right here. In fact, there's more to this because if you'll notice, this Nehemiah has found favor. I, I, let's just stop there just for a second. Nehemiah, to be honest with you, has a cushy job. Jim, cushy job. He cut bears to the kids. He, he takes care of the kids. The, he doesn't have to worry about it being hot or cold. He can go stand in front of the ladies that are doing the pom pom. Or whatever they call it. <laughs> he, in fact, to be honest with you, he's going to eat three squares a day or whatever they eat. He's going to have what he needs. If he gets sick, he's going to be taken care of. He takes care of the king, and his job is secure. He's in good shape. But his heart is broken for where the Israelite, Israelite people are and where they are scattered to and the place that they would call God with. Home. Uh, you know, I grew up over on Tinker Street. I, right there on Tinker Street. And this, uh, about three years ago, we sold that place to a fella. I, I don't go by there very often because I, I have great memories. Not that I don't have good memories. I got great memories. But I, I, I don't go by there very often. But yesterday, Danny and I drove by there. And it's funny what you look at when you go by the place. And, and the old apple trees out there just loaded with apples and and uh, I looked at the place where I kept my Shetland pony, and I looked at all the field back there in the back, and I looked in the front yard, and it's all mowed and cleaned up, and it looked pretty nice, and I was pretty pleased with how it looked. And, and yet, I tell you that there is a, rem a remembrance of home, remembrance of the past, and that's what the Amina has gone through right here. What I want you to think of as we catch this second part, and remember part number one is he had to clean up. If you wanted to hear from God, he's going to have to clean up. Here's number two. Let's start in verse chapter two, verse one. 
in the month of Nisan. And by the way, if I get through all of these without tripping, Brother David will stand up and say it very clearly and loud, all right? <laughs> it's all these names. All right, here we go. In the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been sad in his presence. And the king said to me, Why is your face sad, seeing you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of the heart. Then I was very much afraid. And I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my face be sad? By the way, why was he afraid? Because, see, the king had the authority. If somebody comes in there all downtrodden and everything else, he had authority to kill them. Boom. Get them out of his presence. Wouldn't you love it if you'd come to church and somebody was standing at the door and you didn't have a smile on your face? They said, Zap! You're done. <laughs> well, listen to this. Then I was very much afraid. I said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my face be said when the city, the place of my father's graves lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Verse 4. Then the king said to me, what are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven. By the way, I bet that was a bullet prayer. Y'all ever had one of those? Lord, I need help, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I prayed to the God of heaven and I said to the king, if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves that I may rebuild it. Verse 6, and the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, How long will you be gone, and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. And I said, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given to me to the governors of the province beyond the river, that, <coughs> pardon me, that they may let me pass through until I come to Judah, and a letter to Asaph, the king, keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress, for the temple, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked for, for the good hand of my God was upon me. So I want you to know, number one, it's imperative that if you want to hear God move in your life, you've got to clean up your sin. And number two, if you truly want to see God work, you got to have a plan, you got to organize, and you got to go to work. Plan, organize, and go to work. Now, people may want to say at that point, wow, plan, organize, and go to work. There's a lot to pray. Well, there really isn't. There's a lot to commitment. But if you don't commit, what can God do with that? If you say, God, you take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, unto thee, but you don't consecrate your life unto him. In other words, give it to him fully. If you say to him, I want you to work in my heart and in my life, and I want to be obedient to you, but you never honestly bend the knee to him. You don't open up his word to study and see where he's going with you. You don't ask him daily to be blessed and honored by your life then I ask you, what are you really honestly doing other than paying penance like a Catholic to who you believe in? Yeah. We got a lot of Catholic facts, to be honest. Yeah. Now, how do you say that, Brother Jay? Why do you say that, Brother Jay? Hear what I'm saying. It takes more than just words. Right. See, here's something that's going on. Nehemiah's heart is sad. He has already confessed the sins of his house and he's confessed his own personal sins. He has cleaned his life up before God. He wanted to hear from God and guess what he does? He comes before the king with a plan. He's got it organized out and he's ready to go to work. And what does he do with that, folks? He not only goes before the king with the plan and lays it out clearly, but he has something else going on. And by the way, if we were to keep reading, we would read all the way through this thing that God has a, a plan for him, and he's trying to figure out God's plan and be obedient to it. Folks, you're not always going to know what God wants you to do from the beginning to the end. Amen. I guarantee you if we didn't know we were going to be doing this 47 years ago this past July, 
We didn't know if we were going to be doing this 47 years ago, but we probably would have done some things different. But God needed Dana and I's ministry to be formed in his fashion, mm -hmm. how he wanted it. So, number one, you got to own your own sin. Number two, you got to plan, you got to organize, and you got to go to work. Number three, church, if you're going to attempt good things, you're going to attempt goals from God, you're going to have to have spine. He knew he could be killed at a moment's notice for going to the king and looking at the king and saying, this is what I'm saying. He knew it could cost him his life. But he had to have a spine. You know what? You can't go to work on Monday morning and be just an old regular Joe with your bad language and how everybody else acts if you've given your heart to Jesus. On Monday morning, you can't be just like everybody else if you're honestly sold out to the power and the authority of God. You say, well, I don't work anymore. I'm tired. Well, I just want you to know your family wants you. Your people around you watch you. Your neighbors know when you leave to go to church. You, they know when you miss church. Folks, I just want you to know people understand and know what God is in your life by your actions. I want you to know you can be a testimony of good or a testimony of bad. You see, we oftentimes don't proclaim the power of God's authority in our life because we don't want anybody to really know that we didn't really stand for Him whenever we were supposed to be standing. Everybody else was standing in a certain way. I'm sorry about this. I'm kind of a spitter, but I usually don't get much more than like three, four feet, so I'll try and stay back this way. There's something else that's going on in this scripture that I got to get you to see today. It's really interesting. It happens over in the third chapter. So first, what do you got to own? You see it. Come on, church. What do you got to own? You see it. Two, you got to plan. Organize and go to work. What do you got to do? Plan, organize, go to work. So, wait, wait a minute. Some of y'all bought into this. I know this is kind of Pentecostal, but I, I'm feeling pretty Pentecostal today. Plan, organize, and go to work. Put that in your head because it's imperative. I, I just want to stop for just a second. I want to touch a base before we go any further. Who? Church, don't get bored. Don't get uptight about not having a pastor up there. I've encouraged your deacon committee, your leadership, I've encouraged them not to get in a hurry. And the reason is, is for 16 years of ministry, and then Brother Larry Hurd said for another 13, 15, whatever they were there, 20, 20 years. In that process, I just want y'all to hear this. A pastor that's been here as long as your pastor was, if we get somebody within a, 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 a year or two, I guarantee you, if, we, if, if he comes real quick, six months to a year, we're in trouble. Because he won't stay. We know that from all these years. So, so I'm just telling you, don't get uptight. We got a plan. We organized it, we got a plan, and now we're putting it to work. So trust me here. I've encouraged your committee where to go. And for those of you that say, well, I don't understand why we don't have a preacher, just sit on it a little bit. You'll be all right. <laughs> just be patient. We got this prayed through. We got this going in the right direction. And by the way, let me say another thing. We have encouraged, I have encouraged your church, your, your leadership, to, to find somebody to fill in for a better part of the six months to a year so that they can put, then they come together, put you a pulpit committee together, and you can go searching. We've always found that if we wait just a little bit longer, allow Brother Paul's taste of how he does, did everything, 
I'm allow that to settle down. Then the next guy that comes in does so much easier. That, it, it transitions so much easier to church, so much happier. So be patient. That was free. That was three minutes you gave me for free. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get back to Nehemiah. So the first thing is on your what? Second thing was to plan, to organize, and then what? Go to work. Go to work. And here's the third, uh, the, 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 the third thing. You grow a spine. Have a spine. Be, be willing to stand up against people that are going to talk and do the things that are ungodly. You now have got to be godly. We're going to go to chapter 4. Now, I just want you to know a whole lot has happened during this time. Uh, he gets the lover to do the work. He gets out there. He gets help. He gets people coming up. And he puts people. He, he goes to that plan, organized, and go to work time. That's what he does. And, and to be totally honest with you, if you own your sin, if you plan, organize, and work, if you... If you grow a backbone, this fourth one is going to be key. you got to know your opposition. Now, here we come. Number four, know your opposition. Now, chapter four, verse one. Now, when Samuel had heard that they were building the wall, he was what? Furious. Yeah, he was furious. He was angry and greatly enraged. And he jeered at the Jews, and he said to the, in the presence of his brothers and the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will they revive the stones out of a heap of rubbish and burn ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him. And he said, yes, what are they building? If a fox goes up on that wall, he'll break down their stone wall. Hear, O oh our God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and give them up to be plundered in the land where they are captives. Do not cover their guilt. Let not their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. So, here's a prayer that comes out. Number one, own your sin. Two, plan, organize, and go to work. Number three, grow a spine. Number four, know your opposition. By the way, Every church that has anything going on is going to have opposition. Any church. I have watched this from Africa to here. When we were growing in our little church in Athens, it was a pretty cool thing that was going on. We had gone through quite a bit in the very beginning, about a year and a half of it, two years. Then some of the troubled people left. And God started growing the church Sunday on Sunday. We go visit people. Next thing you know, things were getting excited. Next thing you know, there was lots of, now I want you to listen to me, lots and lots of new faces started showing up at church. I'm just going to ask you a question. When the lots and lots of new faces start joining and coming to church, are you going to allow them a voice in your church? Because you see, old established churches oftentimes don't want the newbies to say anything. And that's how a church stifles life. So you got to have spine inside the church, too. Gotta have a pastor that's willing to say, okay, grow up people, this, this ain't right. And you gotta be willing to trust. But there was something that was going on. There has been belittling and bullying from way back in Moses' day, Abraham's day. People made fun of the people of God forever. There are some things that you just got to let go. Uh, one of my most favorite shows in all of TV is Andy and Mayberry. And Barney. Andy always is taking care of Barney in the background. And Barney had 
gotten in trouble with a fellow who had threatened the war farm. Y'all remember that? And so Andy got a karate expert and he just whooped the fire out of that guy. He dressed him up as Barney and then he had this guy do murder now. <laughs> Barney was taken care of. so worried about what somebody <coughs> says and, and when the word teaches us, pray for them. Pray for those who despitefully use you and bring all manner of evil against you. He's teaching us to pray for each other. He's teaching us to, to pray for those who don't understand. And listen to me, church, I want you to hear where we're at with this. If I'm really honestly right in this scripture, whenever it says Will they finish in a day? Will they revive the stones? Will they fix this heap of ruin? Will they do this? What does Nehemiah do? Did you catch it? What did he do? What did he do, Dave? He goes to work. He finishes the work. <coughs> Listen, I'm going to finish this tonight, but I got some things I want to give you this morning. <coughs> we are going to be in Nehemiah tonight, so. If you want to come back at five is six, I'll be here five. No, I, I'll be here six. Uh, I will promise you that if you will take this and, and, and listen to it, God will grow you somewhere tonight. We're going to take a whole different turn in this thing tonight. But right now, I want you to hear these four things. Own your sin, plan, organize, and work. Know your got to have a spine. Know your opposition and be faithful to pray. Here's one thing I want you to see. Verse 15. When our enemies heard, verse chapter 4, verse 15. When our enemies heard that it was known to us that God had frustrated their claim, we all returned to the wall and each to his work. And guess what happens? Not only do we see God work in this plane, this way, we see it all the way through the Word of God. We see that we have an opportunity to do three little things that make a difference in who we are. First off, I want you to know, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're not born again. There's no way that you can count on Him to help you through all of this. You may say God took care of me, God did this, God did this, but to be honest with you, if, if, if one of my children calls me and I hear his voice, I know when it was actually called. And I'll tell you what, everybody else, if you've been to my office, if you've been to a meeting we've had, and one of my kids calls me and knows there's a meeting going on, but they call me, I'm going to answer that phone. You know why? Because I always answer for my children. That's the way God is. Number two, cannot any longer rest on your laws. We must work as a church. Number three, strategies in the Lord are always helpful. They oftentimes produce souls to be saved. You want to see God work? You want to hear God's victories? You want to be able to share that faith? You want to see God grow your church? You want to see victory in who you are in your life? And you want to hear God's power and his authority in your life? Then be obedient to walk in him. Stay on the job. The last thing I want you to hear is stay on track. What did Nehemiah do after all of that? He went straight back. He dealt with it in prayer. He went back to the job at hand. You know why? I thought about this a lot. Faith is important. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Faith is key here. Now, now hang on just a second. There was a fellow, and he lived in one of those countries that had these steep cliffs everywhere, and he went out walking one afternoon, made a wrong turn, and it got loud.
laid on him, and he thought he could find his way home, and he fell over a cliff, and he was he was grabbing at everything when he was going over, and he finally grabbed a hold of a tree limb, and he's sitting there hanging on to it, and he's calling out, Help! Help! Help me! And all of a sudden, a voice said, Just let go. And he said, Uh, who is this? And he said, this is God. Just let go. There was a silence for him. And then he said, hanging on to that tree, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> a lot of times our faith is very limited because we have forgotten what it is to put faith in God and trust God through the steps that he's given us through his so this morning, I want to tell you, if you're not, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, there's the first step you got to make, and that's asking Jesus to live in your heart and forgive you of your sin. Do you believe that He died on the cross? Do you believe that He's come again? Do you believe He died for your sin? Do you believe that? If you have, then ask Him, Father. I I believe in You. I'm asking You to forgive me for my sin. That's the same thing. Be alive. He cleaned up. Right there in the first. The second thing is, how about we get obedient to God? How about we say, okay, Lord, I'm here. I'm ready. How many of you really don't raise your hand for this, but how many of you haven't been obedient in a long time? Don't raise your hand. I don't want you to have to commit in front of me right now. You see, it's really not important to you make a commitment in front of me as it is. Why do people walk down the aisle, take the preacher by the hand, and say, I want to get saved? Why do they do that? The Word of God teaches us. If you'll not confess me before my Father, which is in heaven, I'll not confess you. So in other words, if you're ashamed of him, he's ashamed of you. So that's why people come down and take the preacher by the hand and say, okay, I, I'm asking Jesus to live my heart. But what about you this morning? on your commitment to Him? What about making a plan and organizing work? When have you done that in your spiritual walk? When? It's time. Every head bowed, every eye closed. In this room, this morning, I'm going to ask you, are you ready to be obedient? We're not going to have a piano playing. Brother Snap's going to come and just sing an invitation. This morning, if God is working in your heart, you've never asked Him to live in your heart to forgive your sin, come take you by the hand. Let me help you walk through that way. It's easy to do. Maybe this morning you haven't heard of God in years, and you need to take care of Him. Or maybe this morning, maybe just this morning, you want to say, I, I've been obedient. I'm trying to walk right. I just need you to pray for me. You need the prayer. Lot. Or maybe you just need to spend some time right there where you are before the Lord. Lord, we bow before you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your peace. We also recognize what we need to do. Sometimes that's very difficult to do. Help us to be better. Help us to walk upright, holy in you. Thank you, Father, for forgiving us when we ask you. Thank you for helping us to have a plan to organize and work down. Help us to have a spy for you. When others come against you, help us to have a spy. Help us to also be obedient in every step that you've designed for us. It's in your name. We pray in the name of Jesus. Would you stand with me this morning? God, Lord, in your heart, we're here. We're ready to, 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 to do this together. Take up my cross. Follow me. I heard of my master. Take up my cross and follow me. I heard my Savior say, I gave my life to ransom me.
thank you for Nehemiah and the word that we've been able to read. I thank you for his heart. I thank you for the privilege that we have to take up responsibility and to serve you faithful. Thank you for his faithful service to you and how he did it. And Lord, how, how he gave us your the understanding of your word. Help us to walk faithful in you this week. Help us to help others see you in all that you do. It's in your name we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Is there anything else? God bless you. Tonight at 6 o'clock we'll be